Dog Podcast. Today is May 23rd, and we're just about one week away from the official start of the 2022 hurricane season. Tomorrow, NOAA is going to issue its forecast for the season, and I imagine it's going to be in line with what many universities and private companies are saying, that conditions favor another busy year in the Atlantic Basin, which, remember, includes the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. We've had six seasons in a row with above normal activity, and if it happens this year, it would be an unprecedented seventh year in a row, at least in the modern historical record. Today, we're going to talk about the loop current, and scientists have known about it for a long time, but it really came into the public's vocabulary, I think, back in the historic 2005 hurricane season. My guest today is going to be Dr. Nick Shea. He has a PhD in physical oceanography. He's currently a professor in the Division of Meteorology and Physical Oceanography at the University of Miami's Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science. And the reason I want to talk to Dr. Shea is because of an op-ed he authored last week. It was about the loop current and what the current state of it says about the upcoming hurricane season. The title of the article was, quote, Bad News for the 2022 Hurricane Season. The loop current, a fueler of monster storms, is looking a lot like it did in 2005, the year of Katrina. Anytime you toss around the name Katrina, it elicits some pretty bad memories for us along the Gulf Coast. The title of that article was also criticized by other meteorologists who claimed it was unnecessary hype or called it clickbait. But there is real science behind the article, and there's definite reason to be concerned. But how concerned should we be? And what is the difference from this year than from other recent active years, including last year in 2020 and also 2005? With that being said, let's bring in today's guest, Dr. Nick Shea. Nick, thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you very much, David. Well, we're going to talk a lot about the loop current today. We're going to talk a lot about the Gulf. Obviously, all of those always of major concerns uh, to my viewers here along the Gulf Coast in Louisiana and Mississippi. And we've had quite a couple of years, to say the least. I, I want to first start off by talking about your article uh, last week about the current state of the loop current. And you said it resembles the state it was back in 2005. In doing so, uh, in the title of the article, you included Katrina. I published your article. Now, anytime I see the word Katrina with an article, it does give me pause to think about, well, what is this really about? Uh, but I hit send anyway, and I put it on my page uh, because I thought the science in it uh, was, was pretty good. But I probably should have given a little bit more context to what that exactly means uh, before I did it. Do you, can you understand why the public, if they see Katrina referenced in an article about the loop current state, might kind of uh, find it upsetting? Yes, I read, um, every time you see the word Katrina for the Northern Gulf, as well as people seeing the word Andrew for South Florida is always giving folks pause. So we'll talk a little bit more about um, this current state of the loop current in, in just a few minutes, but I guess I just wanted to start off because it kind of became in the public vocabulary in the early 2000s, and a lot of it was because of the 2005 season, but could you explain, I guess in the simplest terms, what exactly the loop current is? Well, the loop current is a permanent feature of the circulation of the Gulf. It enters through the Yucatan Straits uh, through um, because of the high level of transport that comes between Cuba and the Yucatan. On the western side of the, of the current itself, it's going north, and all along the eastern side, it's going south. So it clockwise as warm currents do in the in the northern hemisphere and it has typically a cycle of anywhere between six to eleven months maybe a little more maybe a little less but six to eleven months seems to be a, you know a, a good envelope and when it penetrates well into the gulf uh it will 
start to want to shed a big warm eddy. And those warm eddies migrate south and west at about the speed of Miami traffic. <laughs> and uh, 10 years in Miami, I know exactly uh, what you're referring to there. So that's a broad description of the loop current. Uh, is it always there? And if not, do we know why sometimes it's weaker and sometimes it's stronger? It's not always there. David. When af usually after it uh, sheds one of these big warm eddies, it'll start to retract back towards the straits. And that frequency of intrusion and retraction, you know, is one of those things that we study scientifically. We like to understand this a lot more. We have a time envelope, but it's just an, an One of the problems, however, is when that northern intrusion becomes in phase rain season. And that's what we watch for. So let me ask you this, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about where the loop current is, and you sort of referenced it, and also in your article talked about the current state of it. Is it possible the loop current could retreat some between now and the peak of hurricane season, say in August and September? Is it necessarily going to stay in the kind of state that it's in now? Well, usually to retreat, it's a warm, a warm eddy. If we go back to last year with Hurricane Ida, Hurricane Ida entered the Gulf um, as basically a tropical storm category one and went northwest and went over one of these big warm eddies that had shed maybe uh, a month, month and a half earlier, and then it began its retraction. So this, this cycle is really what we try to study. So let's, all that being said, uh, let's talk a little bit more about how much the loop current is involved in a quote, bad hurricane season. Uh, let's start with the loop current looks like as of today in late May, 2022, you say it's similar to 2005. What makes it similar to that year? It's similar in the fact that it's at about this, a similar latitude for its northern extension, somewhere around 27 and a half to 28 degrees north. The difference being this year, it seems as though the, the isotherms, that is to say the warm water, seems to be just a tad deeper this year compared to say May of, or May of 20, of 2005. So that's also cause for alarm because we're trying to understand, is this feature getting warmer in time or is it, is it just going through these cycles of warming and cooling? And we're gonna talk more about the eddies in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. Um, so we know that the loop current uh, played a role in 2005, right? We had record-breaking storm intensities that year. We had Katrina, Rita, Wilma, but we also had Dennis for so early in the season. And we also had Emily, a Category 5 in the Caribbean in July right after Dennis. So there were a lot of factors in play besides the loop current. Is there something special? It seems something special may have been going on in 2005 and not in a good way with the atmosphere. So how big of a factor is or was the loop current when you compare it to that very hyperactive season? Let's, so let's sort of talk a little bit about where, where the water from the loop current comes from. And it basically comes from uh, the warm subtropical waters of the, of the Northwest Caribbean Sea, where the water tends to be, the warm water tends to be much deeper and it also tends to be much warmer. So that's sort of the mother of the loop current, right? If you will, as it, as the loop current gets formed with that transport coming through the Yucatan Straits. So when you talk about things like, like, or 
Emily and Dennis and some of these other severe storms, they too can be energized by just the Northwest Caribbean. And again, we have, we've seen this time and time again with some major storms. So I guess let's go back and, and I'm, I'm going to try to find the direct correlation, I guess, with 2005 and what's happened recently. Um, because, you know, you made it sound like the way people would interpret it is, is that, oh, there's going to be a Katrina this year. I don't think that was your intention, but but that was the implication, like with the title of the article. So let's look at the last few years. We've had some mega storms in the Gulf um, more recently than 2005. Harvey, Michael, Laura, and of course, Ida last year. Uh, Delta, there's a couple others in there, Zeta. So with the conditions you see this year, favor any worse storms than what has occurred recently? I mean, we just had a huge category four, right, Ida? And we'll talk more about the Eddie with that, but then there was Laura and Michael and other recent years. Is there any reason to believe that these storms could be any worse than what we've had the last few years comparing to 2005? I'm not sure if they can be worse, but why we look at this is we the golf to try to understand how the current and the eddies are redistributing the ocean heat throughout the Gulf. And that's one of the things that we do as part of our funded research. Um, moreover, when we do flights out over the Gulf, particularly when we see a storm coming, we will sample these areas with different types of ocean sensors to try to understand how deep the warm water is. So will they be any more intense than some of these other storms? It's unclear. Uh, one of the things that you have to realize with, you know, the Katrina scenario is the atmospheric conditions were favorable. And when you juxtapose warm, favorable atmospheric conditions with a very warm current that doesn't mix and it doesn't cool, so the surface temperatures aren't cooling, that usually spells disaster for somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. And we've seen this scenario time and time again, unfortunately. Well, when we look back at hurricane seasons, oftentimes there may have been a lot of storms, but weather patterns keep the storms out to sea. So the public might not think it was a bad season. Uh, or maybe there ended up being more dry air and wind shear around. So storms never ended up got going despite the favorable loop current. Is it possible that something like that could occur this year? And what does that say about the loop current's overall impact on any one season? when you take all of those elements together? I think when you average things out, there, there are obviously years where we've had the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico where we haven't had any storms, okay? So its impact on those storms that didn't exist is minimal, of course. But when you start combining favorable atmospheric conditions and you know, this year we're in a La Nina right now. Now that could change by the time we get into the heat of hurricane season, no pun intended. Things might be a little different if an El Nino starts kicking in, but right now I think the forecasts are for a La Nina to persist. And you have to be concerned about atmospheric left shear in the atmosphere, no dry air. I mean, right now we have the sow layer really affecting South Florida and a large part of the Gulf in the east. Um, sow layer is actually good for the public because it tends to kill off hurricanes just like shear in the atmosphere. But when storms develop and the conditions are ripe and, you know, these, these systems start sensing how deep that warm water is, it often spells a disaster for someone in the Gulf of Mexico. So 
So the, the bottom line, and just so everybody knows, the sal, that's the Saharan air layer. And I show that on the air sometimes. The Saharan dust, the big plumes that come off Africa, very common uh, in the early summer months, particularly in June and July. And that can have a suppressing uh, impact on uh, tropical formation because it decreases water vapor and such in the atmosphere. So yeah, the bottom line is the loop current sure is a, is a significant element that's present in the Gulf and is fairly present and strong at this point in the season. But then again, a lot of these other factors may be unforecastable ahead of time, especially short-term weather pattern changes. That's true. Let's talk about, you, you've mentioned it a couple of times in the last few minutes, um, eddies and a loop current eddy. Um, tell us about what an eddy is and and how they form. You alluded to it a little bit earlier, but give us a little bit more detail uh, about loop current eddies. Okay, so let's, um, so the loop current sheds these large warm core eddies uh, as, as, it, as the, the current intrudes well into the Gulf. So for example, uh, during the, during the, year of Katrina, it was trying to shed an eddy. Um, it did not shed the eddy during Katrina, but subsequently after Rita came through, the eddy was shed. So what is a warm core eddy? It basically is this large warm uh, water mass that has um, the same heat levels as uh, the loop current. Uh, the currents in there rotate clockwise, just like they do in the loop current. Warm areas have clockwise rotating current. Um, the warm water, typically 78 degrees Fahrenheit, makes it down to, say, 150 meters, maybe 450 feet, give or take. So they do represent a major source of heat in the Gulf of Mexico. And at any given time, there could be up to three of these warm eddies in the Gulf of Mexico because they tend to move very slow once the loop current sheds them. And they move west to southwest. Uh, and eventually they will dissipate when uh, they start encountering the strong bottom terrain off the coast of Texas. So they are a feature of the circulation. And so we've been monitoring these for quite a long time, ever since uh, Hurricane Opal, in fact. So they represent a large source of heat for atmospheric systems to tap into if they start encountering them. So we saw a huge warm core eddy um, that had been shed that Ida went over off the mouth of the Mississippi River, which was a huge contributor into that explosive development. Are the eddies themselves more potent or, I don't like to use the word dangerous, but maybe that's the right word to use, than the loop current itself? Is the water deeper uh, with these eddies than say around the main current? Uh, that's a good question, David. I, I don't think we know enough about that, but suffice it to say that that warm eddy that was shed in 2021, and we're looking at the data now uh, carefully, seem to have a little bit higher levels of heat than we have seen in previous years, um, which is something we were trying to understand is there, is there a real world or is it just going through a cycle? Uh, so that's some research that we're current, currently involved with. And you mentioned it before, uh, how the, the, there's the loop current in the southeast to central Gulf as it is this year, and these eddies will break off and they sort of drift over toward Texas. I was looking at some of the analysis the other day, and you can actually still see the eddy uh, that Ida moved over. So that's sort of moved off to the west now, but it's not as strong as it was. Oh, yeah, they... they lose strength as they continue their movement towards the West. Um, it's just part of their, their life cycle. Uh, and then by the time they get to the shelf break, 
they will dissipate because of bottom friction. So you referenced it just a moment ago, and I think there's some of the recent research that's now being conducted about if these eddies have more heat content to them than they did in years past. And, and as you said, we're not sure of that. Um, could some of this, and I'm not talking about just the eddies, but also the state of the loop current, could any of that be attributed to global warming? Or perhaps is this a cycle that's always been there, but not well observed? Well, that's the the loop current has always been there. I mean, we've known that. So the loop current is part of the general circulation of, of what we call the North Atlantic gyre. So the warm water comes through the Caribbean from the tropics, comes through the Straits, and it exits through the Florida Straits as the Florida current, and then contributes to the Gulf as part of that large clockwise rotating gyre in the North Atlantic. So the loop current has always been there. It's, and it's part of that general circulation pattern and global warming doesn't, doesn't force the loop current of, of what we're concerned about is, are there trends in the warming? Uh, as I alluded to Ida, the, Warm core eddy that energized Ida seemed to have a little bit more heat than your normal warm core eddy. Now we're looking at this in more detail right now to, because there were some sensors out there making measurements as well as the, the aircraft flights that, that we worked with NOAA on. So that's a, a research question. Is global warming playing a role? It's unclear but the trends seem to be a little warming. How much that is, is still a question for us to conduct the research. All right, well, I appreciate you spending time with us today, uh, Dr. Shea, it's been informative. And uh, again, uh, we're hoping uh, that we get a little bit of a break this year in the Northern Gulf. And uh, also a reminder that the loop current's important, but it's not the only factor uh, that's out there. Absolutely, David. There's other factors that we have to worry about with respect to any type of storm or hurricane. All right. Again, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Well, I think the bottom line here is that, yes, the loop current is there like it is almost always, albeit at different intensities. But no, it does not mean that we are going to get hit with a Katrina-like storm. There's a lot more that goes into a Gulf hurricane than just the loop current. Besides, as we talked about, there have been tremendously strong storms in just the past five years in the Gulf. So comparing the Gulf waters to 2005 alone doesn't tell the whole story. It's hard to imagine that we would have seasons like the last two for this year, but I suppose anything is possible. It really sounds like I'm a broken record, guys, but the truth remains we are at risk for a storm every year along the northern Gulf Coast. The good news, if you want to call it that, is that extreme storms like Ida, Laura, and Michael are the exception to the rule when you look at the long-term averages. I know it doesn't seem like that because of how we've been slammed for several years in a row. But we also need to be reminded of this. There are the big storms, but then there's also the tropical storm just does. What's that? That's how the National Hurricane Center director, Ken Graham, described meaning just a tropical storm or just a category one. We've seen really bad flooding from storms like this as well. And so we have to watch all of these storms, not just the big ones. I know it's been exhausting the last couple of years, compounded with the stressors of the pandemic, but we'll have to be ready for whatever might come this year. A reminder, if you're watching this video podcast, you can also listen to it. We have the audio file also on the website at fox8live.com. And of course, you can download it from wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chief Meteorologist David Bernard. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.